So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and an update on some of my recent painting projects. Um, saga. Uh, the Saga project continues uh, with some cavalry uh, and also a big man or officer, general. I think they're called generals in Saga. <laughs> it's been so long since I played it, I've forgotten. Um, this is part of my ongoing um, Alexandrian successor uh, saga project for Age of uh, Alexander book, the new one that's come out. Uh, in fact, probably by the time you see this, I will have had my first game uh, with Graham using the new rules and uh, or new supplement. And um, these may be the last saga figures I paint for some considerable time, depending on how it goes. <laughs> um, so I went for, I mentioned in the previous uh, painting video, I decided that I would uh, work on a sort of Eastern uh, successor force for Age of Alexander um, mainly because I have I just love that period I think it's absolutely fascinating to me um, and you've seen the pikeman and uh, the elephant and so forth that I've already done so this is um, the big man or the the general uh, to lead the faction and also um, a unit of four hearthguard cavalry heavy cavalry uh, these are plastic vitrix um, successor cavalry and again I've just gone gone to town on the colours really I just um, decided that uh, they would be bright and beautiful um, we'll see what they're like on the table but that's how they are uh, and I, I really enjoyed doing these fellas I, I, I literally the beauty of doing Saga particularly for the Hearthguard uh, because they're only four man units um, I picked up um, some spare sprues uh, just from uh, eBay somebody was selling just uh, individual sprues and I picked those up and um, had ended, my, ended up with well six um, cavalry there's two generals separately and um, the uh, four man hearthguard unit um, and they got lots of options on them you can have different helmets and different um, arm positions and some have uh, lances some have you can have javelins you can have um, swords all sorts of things so I went with mainly uh, lances as you can see or probably sarissas as they were then I don't think they were quite contosses at that point but anyway uh, I went with them and uh, I'm jolly pleased with how they came out um, went with the sort of Eastern European um, Eastern Asian um, helmets that was fairly common for that area of uh, of Seleucid um, successor lands or you know almost into the Bactrian areas um, and just as I say went with bright colors and uh, let my imagination go a bit crazy I've used um, uh, some of the transfers from Little Big Man in fact I think they're actually um, Greek hoplite um, transfers but I just sort of cut them down and stuck them onto these shields and painted around them just to make sure they they, they sort of fitted and looked good I've just seen that one there leads a little bit of pushing down it seems to have lifted up which is a little annoying so I need to, I need to get a little bit of uh, varnish on it to push it back down again any rolled up I'm very pleased with how these came out they've been based using um, uh, Vallejo sort of sand effect uh, that sort of paste you can get um, and then with tufts pushed into it which um, which I like so there you go first unit well another point of saga plus the for us the general completed and these are some more of my saga um, aid of Alexander successor force well I suppose they could be any force at all uh, in the book these are peltasts or I don't know, any kind of uh, warriors with javelins um, which come up in the lists. Uh, these are Victrix plastics. Um, I bought the beauty of those sort of sprue shops where, in fact, I think it was the sprue shop that I bought these from. Um, I think it was just two sprues, which gives you enough for eight warriors, which is a group within uh, Saga, so um, or a unit within Saga. So that was absolutely perfect don't have any waste don't have any extras um I, I guess unit for unit it's probably uh, um, a bit more expensive but um if you're not going to need the extras then not much point so um i painted them up uh, with a combination of whites and creams and little yellowy colors in them uh, under this light you can't quite tell they're very different but they 
um, sort of have a little bit of a blend within them, which I quite liked. And um, given them some shield transfers, which are the... Um, I think actually the transfers cost more than the actual figures did, from what I remember. Um, just buying a strip of those from Victrix. Um, and there you go, another point for the Saga Force done. And this is another point for my Saga Force. This would be a mercenary unit of Cappadocian uh, light infantry or levy as they are in Saga. Um, these are Gripping Beast Metals. I bought them during their um, Black Friday sale, so um, I thought that would be a useful thing to do. Um, I guess I could just use them as just javelin armed velets um, in the, uh, or levy, sorry, I'm not velets. Um, Javelin on levy in the uh, in my army list, or one of whichever army list I even end up going for at the moment as successor because I like them, but they're actually terrible from what I can see. Um, but anyway, so I painted these up. Um, I don't know much about the Cappadocians, um, but the Gripping Beast picture had some some of them wearing sort of big striped tunics, so I've sort of followed that theme. Uh, they've all got. Uh, big cloaks on so I've kept them sort of fairly muted uh, red yellow green white um, sort of a creamy color and brown um, and um, the shields are all different sizes but I basically took some of the spare transfers I had uh, from little big man and, and fitted them on um, because I just thought they look cool um, so I don't know whether that's correct um, but they are now so um, yeah the oh and the standard guy um, I took another bit of the transfer I had for the from the elephant, so I bought the Vitrix elephant transfers, if you recall, and then they didn't fit on the Gripping Beast uh, elephant, <laughs> but I chopped them up a bit, and I did the same with this guy, and just uh, took the, uh, I think that's from the Ptolemy elephant, that guy, or that um, sort of, uh, it's like Horus, or one of the, one of the, uh, um, one of the Egyptian gods on that blue banner. So it comes out quite nicely, I think. So that's another point for Saga done. But it isn't just Saga I've been working on. Um, these are um, horses that are, um, I guess, tied to a... Um, I don't know what they call those. What do they call those? I don't know. Tied, you see them in Westerns all the time, where the horses are tied to the, to the sort of post there. Uh, maybe that's all they're called, post. I don't know. Um, and I can't even remember where I picked up this this model. Um, I think I was ordering something else and I saw it and I thought, well, that'd be quite fun because we played a dead man's hand game where we had an objective to get to a particular horse uh, and we didn't have anything sort of look su suitable, so we just stuck any old horse on there. And I just thought, if we ever play that kind of scenario again, or even if we don't, but just so it looks um, a bit of... Um, you know, a bit of colour to the table. Um, it'd be quite fun to have, so I painted painted these up. Start them on the base using the base using the Vallejo um, sand paste stuff um, uh, with some tufts, and um, yeah, it's not going to win any awards, but it's quite fun. So this fella is a another building. Um, this was one of uh, the last remaining bits that I got uh, from America from Artichon. Um, designs when he was closing down um, the other building I didn't like as much or I haven't painted up as well maybe uh, this one I actually quite enjoyed doing and it seems to have uh, it seems to have painted up quite nicely it's obviously a sort of a outbacky type um, uh, cottage you've got the the it's all made of um, wooden um, uh, trunks and then it's got the um, simulated thatch and then the uh, the stone brickwork the roof comes off um, I have to say I, I did prep these quite a lot as I did with the other ones but I don't know what kind of resin he uses or used because he's retired now um, but I had a hell of a job getting the paint to adhere to it even even after it was properly prepped and and um, uh, undercoated with the Halfords uh, grey which I always use and have, never have any problems with this for some reason just would not adhere. So um, yeah, but in the end, a uh, bit of brute force ignorance and just keep putting layers on. And in some ways that worked to my advantage because it meant I had to put multiple layers on, um, washes on to make it just so you couldn't see the plastic showing through because it just kept running off. Um, 
but uh, and then a nice decent varnish over the top and uh, Bob Girati that's another building for the collection and next up um, some more of the Boxer Rebellion Edition figures uh, the this is a crump German field artillery piece with its German crew um, which played a part of some of the success uh, some of the coalition forces that tried to um, break through to Peking in the Boxer Rebelling and it was largely the sort of superiority of the uh, Allied artillery and rifles uh, that won them the uh, won them against the numbers of the, the Boxers um, as is often the case in a lot of colonial battles uh, firepower won out against uh, bravery um, these are so I'm a bit disappointed with the, some of the you can see on the, some of the figures the men particularly the um, the seams the the, the the edging between the uh, uh, the figures and I tried really hard to to cut that back and and work it down and use the file on some of them but you can still very clearly see where they uh, where the joins are uh, which is a little frustrating but I think the molds must have been quite old or something but um, from I mean they look worse under these light on a bright light like this um, once they're on the table, they should be less obvious, but yeah, you know, it's just slightly galling when you when you rub and scrub and file, and still it uh, uh, still you can see the seams there. But anyway, never mind. Uh, this will be useful in some of the games I've got planned. I'm even thinking I've got so many figures now for the boxes. I might even try and just play some uh, black powder variants to um, uh, you know so I can have some bigger games of boxes against uh, coalition troops. Anyway. Germans are coming. And next up, another point of uh, Saga troops for the Age of Alexander forces that I'm building. Uh, this is a Scythian Saka horse archer unit, which I think is um, a mercenary unit in the lists. Um, and I think, judging by my one outing so far on Age of Alexander, I'm going to need a bit more missile fire, so maybe uh, some horse archers might do the trick. Anyway, these are, I think, the first core figures. They're all metal. Um, not the very best. And actually, having seen that Victrix have got some um, plastic horse archers just literally come out, uh, just as I'd finished this unit off. Um, it's a little bit frustrating because those do look lovely models. But, you know, I'm not sure how often I'm going to be playing Saga, so these will uh, all do for now. Um, but, um, yeah, another unit tw uh, Sorry, eight uh, light cavalry horsemen finished. So these are some uh, Border Reaver figures that I've painted up. These are War Games Foundry Metals. Um, they are, um, I think they're the Borderers and... I can't remember what the other one pack is. There's two packs, basically. This guy seems to be leaning over a bit. I don't know why. Anyway, um, I painted them up uh, just as sort of nondescript extra... Uh, borderers because um, as you know if you've been watching the border war stuff I've been doing um, Ian's range at the moment is fairly limited and I just thought I wanted a bit of variety in the uh, forces I could have so I've got these extra miniatures when I was placing an order earlier in the year with uh, War Games Foundry and um, yeah they're nice enough figures and it'll be just fun to have some additional uh, troops for games which will definitely be happening. Um, you'll see the game I posted uh, on Christmas Eve. If you're interested in Border Wars, um, I really enjoyed it and I can definitely see the rule system being a favourite of mine. And also, I think there'll be a lot of interest if I take it down to Farnborough Wargaming Club. I think a lot of people will be interested in there. So there you go. Uh, addiction for the new year, which I wasn't expecting, but uh, already in full flow so anyway that's what i've been working on through 2022 um i think that'll probably be my last painting update for this year because um well definitely for this year in terms of a video because i just uh don't tend to do so much over the christmas period i know lots of other people do uh, a lot more painting and a lot more hobbying over christmas but uh, for me um, I don't. I tend to pack all the paints away um, because I paint usually in the living room on the living room table because the family around and because it's Christmas and everything else. I just pack it all away and I don't do any. So very unlikely that I'll do 
any figures at all over the Christmas period. So these will probably be the last ones for um, until January. <laughs> but there you go. I've enjoyed it. I've had some great, um, I don't know how many figures. I didn't do the count this year on figures, um, but I did a lot. So, um, But I thoroughly enjoyed all my projects. Anyway, that's it for me for 2022. I hope, you do, hope you're having a great festive break. Hope things are going well for you. Um, I hope you're enjoying the festivities if you're able to celebrate them. Um, and um, I hope you had a fantastic 2022, considering everything else that was going on in the world. Um, and here's to an even better 2023. Nearly said 24. <laughs> anyway, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.